But what if you are using Excel 2010? You see, this function was just introduced in 2013. So what do you do then? Well, let's see if we can create that scenario again. Let's just move me back over here. I'm just going to highlight this here and I'm going to clear all. That's good. So what I need to do here is if I over here in the table, uh, just add in unique, let's say distinct counts. And what I'll do here is I will zoom in and what I'm going to just do just to make uh, help you understand what we're going, what we're doing here is we are going to just convert this back to a range. So it's just as it's normal cell. So no fill. Uh, let's just clear all the formatting. That's fine. Oh, make sure I put this back to pounds and pence. There we go. Alrighty then. So what I want to do is I want to do a distinct count here. So how do I do that? So I use a combination of different types of functions. I'm just going to type the function straight in and then you'll have to just follow along as best you can. And hopefully this answers your question. Uh, for the person who's requested this until you upgrade obviously into 2013. So first I'm going to do a sum and then if and then using a frequency function. So sum open bracket if open bracket frequency open bracket. Now frequency function is a function that looks at a certain group of numbers and when you type in a number in an array um, in that part of the function the bins part of the function will check to see the, which numbers are underneath it. So if you type, say, like a 10 in the bins part of the function, and then you write in the array, like a list of functions, it will tell you how many numbers are under the number 10. Okay, so if you want more about the frequency function, please let me know and I can put a video up explaining that. It's just quite straightforward there. The next one is a match function. Again, I've got many videos about the match function where you can use that with index and match, a very handy function. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at the list of names just here and then comma and compare it with exactly the same list. Then a comma, I want the exact match. So that's the first part of the frequency or the data array part as you can just see here. So it's the data array part of that function. The next one is the bins array and it's exactly the same. So I'm going to go to match and then I will select the list of data here and then a comma and exactly the same. So it's comparing it with itself basically. Okay, close that off and close off the um, bracket for the match function, close off the bracket for the frequency function and I need to check to see the condition if it's greater than zero. If it is, put in a one. If it isn't, well I don't want it to do anything so I'm just going to close off the brackets and then I'm going to press enter and now I got a distinct count here. I can see that there's five distinct or unique customers. So I'm going to auto fill that down so I can use this for the um, pivot table. But before I do, I'm just going to highlight the whole f formula and press F4 to put these dollar signs in. So when I come to auto fill it down like so, it comes down. So it's five, 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 you know, so I can use it for the um, pivot table. So I'm not going to bother with doing a table with this. What I will do is move myself out the way just over here. And then I'm going to um, click inside my data and go to insert and pivot table to create my pivot table. Uh, I can't in add this to the data model uh, because it would work in Excel 2010. So this time what I'm going to do is just going to do it as an existing worksheet. Just click it at the top here, click on OK and there's my pivot table. So what I need to do now is I can now drag in name just down to here onto rows and then I can drag discount, distinct count into values. Of course, the distinct count adds everything up, but I just need to change the formula by clicking on value field settings. So you see how I'm clicking this down here. So just down here where value field settings, give that one a click. That's it. And then I'm going to change the function to average. So now I can see this is the average here. So a bit of tidying up if you wanted. If you didn't want, for instance, uh, list, literally listed five companies here. If you just wanted a five at the bottom, then you can do things like click at the top and just press space to change the name at the top here. Bring it in a little bit. I like the list of numbers and then maybe change the uh, text color to a white color here to get rid of that. And it's ready to ready to go. And also you can add other things to the pivot table. So if I wanted to add the sales, I can drag that down to uh, under values here or above values depending on uh, the different types of sales or anything that I wanted to see there. Obviously I need to highlight this and maybe change the color of the 
text of that and change the formatting as well just to put the icing on the cake there we go pop it in as accounting uh, there we go let's just try to find the pounds and pence I'll have to change the formatting of this one here there we go brilliant excellent so thanks so much for watching I hope that clears up a few um, issues especially if you're using Excel 2010 and these are nice powerful ways to do that so just to recap if you're using Excel 2013 and 16 remember when you're creating that pivot table when you go to insert your pivot table remember that little checkbox at the bottom to add it to the data model if you're not then you're going to be looking at the, using a little bit of a bigger function it is quite a an in-depth one as you can see so this function here in using that but hopefully it makes sense and all the dollar signs are created just by pressing f4 afterwards thanks for watching please subscribe uh, if you do like this video please give it a good old thumbs up it will really be appreciated and keep a watch out for more videos thank you so much for watching